Okay, now for the not so good parts of this comic. If you're new around here and you didn't watch my other video, then let me fill you in. Last time, I talked about a webcomic by Spoon called Who Made Me a Princess? Oh, also by Plutus. And I said that I'd make a video in the future talking about what parts I don't like about this story. And this is that video. And of course, there are spoilers here, so if you don't want to get spoiled, then read the story. Oh, what's that? You do want to get spoiled? Or maybe you read the comic already? Well then, let's get started. Real quick, I'm sorry that this is more of a rant than a calm review. If rants are not your thing, feel free to move on to other things. If you find rants interesting or entertaining, hi! Raven. Raven, to me, was annoying. He stole people's cake and was messy. He didn't have the strong bond with Appy that pets usually do with their owners. He was just there. Spoon tried to make him cute by making the eyes all sparkly, but he was not cute. I feel like she tried too hard and was too obvious in trying to make him likable, something she also did with another character, Jeanette, which made him not likable. I could tell because Athy liked Raven a lot, which felt out of character because why would she like Raven, who does nothing but eat her cake? The Athy I know would not tolerate that. And he turned out to be not memorable. I felt nothing when he, spoiler, disappeared. And I really dislike the trend of people making animals understand human language. Man, I wish Papa's memories would come back. I'm so sad. <laughs> I'm gonna eat raven. Like, no, this is not how pets behave. This could all be improved by making him a likable character rather than telling us to like him. So, no over sparkly eyes. No, raven is the best. And if you really want raven to understand human language, that's fine too. But you have to go all the way. Give Raven intelligence at the level of humans. Give him personality, a brain, thoughts, and no puppy whines or weird growling, because he has intelligence now. If Raven can comprehend human language, then he should naturally behave more human too. Man, I wish Papa's memories would come back. I'm so sad. I'm gonna eat Raven. And look at what makes pets likable. How they're with you when no one else is. How they silently listen to your troubles and comfort you with their presence. How they can look so silly and dorky sometimes. And make that really shine within your character. Lucas. I'm not sure why people like Lucas so much. He's not a really good character. Wait, wait, wait. At least give me a chance to explain. And it's good if you like him. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. I'm just sharing my thoughts and my experience on reading about him in the story. Okay, so he was rude and was willing to kill a person for no reason other than she's kind of getting in the way. This adorable baby girl, Athi. Did you forget that he was literally going to kill her? I know Claude was too, but for stronger, more complicated reasons. That made sense. But killing her for this weak and petty reason, she's getting in the way. That is completely unreasonable. And I know sometimes in the bad guy, good girl romance trope, the guy's like, I'm gonna kill you, then falls in love, but these situations are different. Why? Those bad guys threaten to kill, but don't actually do it. They bark, but don't bite. But Lucas was legit going to do it. No doubt in his mind, Raven is literally the only reason he didn't do it. Thank you, Raven. I like you in this one moment. Give credit when credit's due. Good job. But my opinion on Raven from earlier still stands. Also, the story is listed as romance, but there's barely any romance between these two. There's the scene where she kisses him on the cheek, which I admit is kind of cute, but that happens way later in the story. The main focus of the story, from a reader's point of view, is clearly the family aspect of it, so just no false advertising, please. And pick a side. You can't choose the uncanny valley. Yes romance or no romance. If yes, then you need to actively work on it. You can't just wait for chapter 70 or something, or make progress so far apart with such wide in-betweens. If no romance, then just give Lucas less screen time. Have him be her friend or something. Or make him catch feelings, but keep it as an obvious background thing and not in the spotlight of the story. A Ajikiel. Jeanette is coming up after this. Yeah, so I don't like either of the love interests. Ezekiel fell in love with Athi just by looking at her. He barely spent any time with her and he's already devoted to her. 
what does this tell me, the reader? That he cares about her looks, not her personality. And that's obviously not okay. If Spoon wanted me to like him, she shouldn't have made him fall in love with her in just a glance. Hey, at least Lucas didn't fall in love instantly. One point for him. But, again, my previous opinion still stands. Also, Ezekiel is just boring. He doesn't exist except to create a dramatic love triangle. At least, that's what it feels like. And the romance isn't even the focus of the story, so I think the best solution would to just make him not fall in love with her. And if you really want to have romance, then focus it with Lucas and Athy. No random Ezekiel distractions. Jeanette. Probably the moment we've all been waiting for. People hate Jeanette. Like, who made me a princess Jeanette? Not lovely princess Jeanette. Though, no one likes her either. Even though who made me a princess Jeanette is not guilty of anything. For a long time, I thought, well, those people kind of need to chill. But then, one day, I realized it. It's because her character was written terribly. Spoon likes Jeanette, clearly. It shows in her writing and artwork. And it's so, so clear that she wants us to like her too. Remember what I said about Raven the dog? Yeah, she does the same thing here. Making it painfully obvious that she wants us to like this character. Telling us to like them, rather than actually making the character themselves likable. Jeanette, there's a reason why people don't like her, why I don't like her, and it took me so long to realize it. It's because Spoon keeps trying to make us like her. She has way too much screen time, and she has no personality other than nice and cute. I already talked about the first one. The second one ties in with the first. Spoon likes Jeanette, which is fine, but she keeps trying to make the audience like Jeanette, and she does that by giving several chapters to her to be in the spotlight. The Jeanette and her father adorable moments I like, as I previously said in my other video. They're good. They parallel Claude and Athia's beautiful moments. But Spoon does more than just that. She shows her thoughts and monologues, which is bad because, number three, Jeanette has no real personality. And what's worse, she's starting to do the same thing with Athi. More on that later. But let's compare personalities real quick. I know these characters are different, and you should have different and they should have different personalities, but hopefully you'll understand in a moment. Athi, in the beginning and middle of the story, nice, cute, funny, sassy, doesn't give up. Jeanette, nice, cute, naive. The end. If you didn't catch that, Jeanette is basically Athi, but without the characteristics that make a character interesting. She's missing that, making her boring and frustrating character to watch. Let me give an example. Jeanette sees that Athi is hiding the truth from her. Does she try to find out what she's hiding? Does she get upset and confront her about it? Does she choose to investigate herself? No. She does nothing but say, Oh no, this makes me sad. It's like she's just a doll. She doesn't have a mind of her own. She doesn't have a personality of her own. And Spoon keeps trying to make us like this doll. That is boring and uninteresting, giving us chapters about her that just infuriate us more. Spoon, if you wanted us to like Jeanette, you have to rework her character, her personality, first. She needs to be distinct, more realistic, she needs a mind, she needs action. She needs to have wants, and she has to actually go after those wants. Athi. Like I said before, I like Athi's personality in the earlier sections of the story, and I like her relationship with her dad. But recently, she's been changing, and I'm not a fan of those changes. In the more recent chapters, Athi is oddly devoted to her dad and her dad alone. When she finds out she can save him, she says yes immediately. She doesn't really think about Lily or anyone else, or her own self for that matter, which is super out of character. In the beginning, Athi cares about her well-being a lot. It's her main goal, to survive. But now she's willing to throw away her life so suddenly? The Athi I know would at least be afraid. She fought so hard for her life. Of course, she'd naturally be afraid to lose it. And not wanting to die isn't selfish. It's natural instinct to want to be alive. I feel like it would have made sense for her to hesitate at first. Then she can consider everyone else and the future of the empire, and she can make the sacrifice. And it should be for others, not because she would be upset without her dear old dad. Actually, doing it to save her dad so she can be happy and not for the sake of others is selfish, and would contradict the growth that it seems Spoon is trying to portray. Her personality is totally different. I get that she grows to become caring towards others, but growing does not mean that your entire personality changes. Example, dad passes out, dad, no, 
Dad, I need to save him. Would the sassy Athy we know really say that? Because I'm not convinced. I feel like she'd say something like this. Dad's still not awake. What should I do? I n don't know how to rule an empire. I've never been a person in power before. Dad, what do I do? Please wake up. The Athia I know would never become that obsessed and that cheesy with her dad. She's way too cheesy right now, and she's starting to feel more like Jeanette. She's literally acting like lovely Princess Jeanette when Claude collapsed in the dream scene, overly concerned and saying, Oh no, my dear dad, no! Like, Athi would not say this. Why is she acting like this right now? I just feel like she's not the same character anymore, that she's losing the characteristics that were interesting and made me attached to her. Now I'm just losing that attachment. Rather than being happy about her growth, I'm sad because it's not her anymore. It doesn't feel like her anymore. Side note, skip to this time if you don't care and just want to move on to the next character. Okay, so Spoon's art is beautiful, gorgeous, and normally I wouldn't complain about the art in a comic because it's art and it takes effort and the artist's enjoyment. So it's pretty insensitive when people say, what's wrong with this? It looks weird. It's fine to criticize, but you need to respect the person and take their feelings into account. Anyway, this is a really small thing that just kind of bugged me, so I'm hoping that it won't hurt anyone's feelings. At these jeweled eyes in the recent chapters, I feel like it doesn't look the same as it used to, which makes sense, art changes over time, but for the longest time her eyes have been mostly the same and beautiful, maybe, sm maybe small changes but nothing too big. Then one day, in one chapter, it was completely different. To me, her eyes look more soulless now, I can barely see her people. It shouldn't be a not enough time thing because soon can just cut out the jewel effect from a previous picture and insert it in like she showed was possible in her how to draw jeweled eyes video strange i thought maybe this is a one-time thing like like she's showing that the effects from the tree need a little more time to wear off because i know that the eyes without pupils was on purpose when athi visited the tree it was supposed to look extra magical and sparkly there I get that, but like in the next chapter, and the next, and the next, it's still the same? And the other characters' eyes are fine, especially Diana's. Hers look beautiful and full of life. It's just the jewel eyes that changed, and I have no clue why it looks too sparkly and the pupils are gone. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say in regards to the art. Alright, one more guys. Lily. Lily is an important character, or at least she should be. She's Athanasia's nanny, the one who raised her when her mother couldn't and when Claude wasn't there. She was truly Athi's first parent and the one who had love for her and showed love when no one else did or could. Yet, we barely see any of her anymore. All Athi cares about now is Claude. She doesn't seem to have any strong emotional connection to Lily anymore, even though she should, and she should be just as, if not more important, than Claude. Lily was there from the very beginning and is still there, yet she's treated as a side character? She has no true backstory, we barely know who she is and what she was doing before becoming Athi's nanny. She's a boring character because Spoon tells us nothing about her and gives her so little screen time. If you weren't going to develop Lily, then you shouldn't have made her so important in the beginning. You shouldn't have ever given her a love interest. Now she's there, but you've given her no development, so I feel nothing but sadness at the waste of her character when I think of her. A lot of people in the Who Made Me a Princess community feels like it makes sense for Lily and Diana to have been close friends. I think that's a great way to start improving Lily. It gives her a stronger reason to care for Athi so much, and because she knew Diana, she'd be able to connect to Athi and Claude on a bigger level, making her become part of the story more, and making her more interesting. Anyways, that's all. Thank you for listening to my little rant, and remember, I do like Who Made Me a Princess too. I just feel like it had the potential to be so much more. And if you disagree with anything, or if I remembered something wrong, feel free to let me know or correct me in the comments. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Nah, the first one's mine.